Today we're answering more of your pendulum questions. If this interests you, stick around and let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Veronica and welcome back to The Wholeness Shift. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm glad you found me. And if you're returning, you're already part of the family, welcome back. It's good to have you here. You know I love you. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button below. I wouldn't want you to miss out on anything good. I talk about easy, practical spirituality and how you can navigate your spiritual awakening. I talk about all of the galactic and esoteric things that you could think of, all the good stuff. So if this interests you, hit the subscribe button. I'm hungry. <laughs> Mama needs a snack. So today we're answering even more of your pendulum questions. And if you don't know, on my channel, there's a whole pendulum playlist that has just a slew of videos. If you're new to this, set aside an hour or two and go through the videos that you haven't seen yet and educate yourself. Okay, let's dive into this. Number one, I have noticed some guides are stronger in their pendulum responses than others. Is this a reflection on my connection to them or on their ability to communicate with me? Good question. Um, so when your guide or an angel or whomever wants to talk to you or you want to talk to them, they actually lower their vibrations a bit in order to make themselves accessible to you. And you have to have your vibes up so that you kind of meet in the middle, right? Or that the gap's not too wide. So if their response is stronger than some others, they may either just have stronger energy, like I've talked about before, like Archangel Metatron, very strong energy typically. Um, or it can mean that your vibes are really, really high and you're doing great and you've made a good connection. As I've talked about many, many times, my main guide, Spomi, it's not that his vibes are lower or that he's weaker. It's just that he's naturally a gentle, soft-spoken spirit. And like when you connect to his energy, if you're clairsentient and you can feel energy, Spomi just feels soft and gentle. And his, the swing of his pendulum response reflects that. Or if you think of like Mighty Metatron or Archangel Michael, they swing harder. So it could be your vibes are low. It could be they are just softer spoken. Number two, my pendulum doesn't want to seem to work for me. I'm wondering if birthstones would resonate better. Try and find out. Who knows? How'd you like that answer? <laughs> Was that articulate and thoughtful for you? Different pendulums resonate differently with different people. As I talked about in one of the other videos, um, there are some pendulums I have that, like this one, this black one, it just swings more like solid. So that one swings very like solid, like um, strong like bull. Do you know what I mean? It's just grounded, solid swing. There are some that I have that just feel like they're floating just like a greased wheel there are some that just feel sluggish like a boulder they feel like a rock like it, it's gonna take heaven and earth to get those things to move and even then it's gonna hardly move um now those may act totally differently for someone else that's just how my energy connects to them so perhaps all i can say is try it and find out but on that note too, like if your pendulum's not working at all, determine if it's your vibes. It might, might be your vibes aren't high enough to get it to move. And I think this came from the same source. I think this might've been Patty that sent both of these questions. So um, number three, I have L rods that work perfect, meaning dousing rods that you hold in your hand and like they cross, right? Um, I have L rods that work perfect, but it's a challenge to connect with pendulums. I have a selenite bar and have moon cleanse them and set them on my Bible and held them, but still no movement. Well, um, I've never seen one thing work for someone and not another. 
I'm not saying that doesn't happen. I'm just saying I haven't seen it. Um, typically, if something won't work for you, it typically means your vibes are too low for anything to work for you. Um, but maybe, you know, you. I know that the dowsing rods are your tool of choice. We've talked about this. And um, maybe that's just the one that you're supposed to be using. Maybe that's what resonates most with you. Um, maybe those dowsing rods, and I'm just brainstorming here. I don't know any of this for fact. If any of you guys know, comment below and help us out. Um, maybe the dowsing rods work more in conjunction with like the electro electromagnetic forces of the earth. Because I know that you can use them to find water and everything because they they react to the energy of the earth and water and electricity. Like if you put them near an outlet, they'll move. There's different things that make them move. So maybe that makes them more conducive to using for you. If that makes sense. Um, whereas the pendulum doesn't, it relies solely on your vibration and your connection um, to move. So that's just a thought off the top of my head, but I don't have experience with that firsthand. Like I said, if any of you guys do, help us out. Jump in. Number four. And I believe my little Marita left me this one. Some practices for beginners who need a little courage using the pendulum. And, well, I don't have any, but I can try to think of some and maybe come out at a later time with them. Um, what should I say, Spoomy? What answer should I give her? How can she practice? Spomi is saying just to practice asking anything, practice um, your guides singing Beatles songs with you or spelling out Beatles lyrics or, you know what I mean? Just practice, practice getting it to swing, practice getting used to looking at where the crystal is going over the letters so that it's easier for you to read. Practice getting used to your guide's energy in response to using the pendulum so that you um, can develop that shorthand that I talk about in other videos. Holy cow, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but like major wind, holy cow. That was a little scary. <laughs> Yeah, so that you can practice developing that shorthand um, of hearing your guides or of being able to guess what they're going to say because you know that they tend to use the same vernacular and the same phrases all the time. Number five, can you use a cross or crucifix as a dowsing tool? <gasps> Every Catholic on the planet just gasped. <laughs> Not me, but like them, they're just like, oh! <gasps> um, is that seriously overstepping the limits due to the Bible? You may be asking the wrong person <laughs> about this because I no longer believe that the Bible is the inherent word of God. Oh, we are making every right wing person gasp and like, come for me. Don't come for me. I'm not interested. Don't come for me. Save it. Um, I no longer believe that the Bible is the word of God. I take solace from some verses from the Bible. I think the Bible can have some good advice, some inspiration, some comfort. But do I believe that the Bible is the word of God? No. I believe it is the word of man and it has been manipulated and changed and rewritten and rephrased so many times through history in order to serve the patriarchy, bottom line. I think that it is a divisive tool used to manipulate, punish, shame, and um, further hate in this world. And I don't really care what the Bible says. Let's just get that out of the way. The second part of that is that I don't care what people say. 
because you know Christians they're not Christians they are people who have called themselves Christians but they're really just like right-wing Christian nationalists they're a cult that's a topic for another video toxic Christianity will say that the Bible talks against all of this stuff that it is evil that it is witchcraft bleh. first of all I don't care as we've already established I don't care what you have to say your garbage your cult is garbage I don't agree with you I don't believe in you but when I was starting this journey when I still was a Christian um, I prayed heavily I prayed heavily on this because I felt guilty like should I be using this pendulum should I be doing this thing am I committing a sin are you mad at me God am I doing something wrong are you gonna cast me into some like like a fire are you gonna is this blasphemy is this heresy like give me some direction the only thing that kept happening is that I was given the verse over and over and over again to try the spirits Try the spirits to see if they are of God. That doesn't say that there are no spirits you can communicate with. That says test the spirits to see if they are high vibration and give you good information and loving divine light information or if they don't. Stay away from the ones that don't. Okay? So... Can you use a cross or a crucifix? Technically, you can use anything on this planet that will swing and that works for you. Um, you could use a necklace. As I've said before, you can use a necklace. You can use a thimble or a needle or a nut or a bolt or washer, something tied onto the end of the string. If it swings and it works for you, you can use it. So, can you use a cross or a crucifix? Yeah. Is it blasphemy or is it seriously overstepping? That depends on who you talk to and whether or not you value their opinion. <laughs> the fact that you're even asking this shows me that you already know in your gut that it's okay. Or else you wouldn't even be asking. You know it's okay. But I would never tell someone what to do. I will never tell you n not to worship a certain way. I will never tell you not to believe a certain thing. I am not here to proselytize anybody. I'm not here to convince you. The way Spomi always said it to me was that because, okay, there's, ugh, I'm opening a can of worms here. I'm just going to touch on it briefly, okay? First of all, you... I'm sure that you all know, regardless of your belief system, I know that you've all met people who claim to be Christian and they are just the most beautiful, loving, I almost want to cry talking about it. Like they are the most loving, beautiful, kind-hearted, generous people. They truly do have the love of Jesus pouring out of every hole in their body. Do you know what I mean? You know those people that just walk in a room and they are just love and light embodied. Those are truly people who are following Jesus. And that's the way it's meant to be. The majority of the church is not that way. They are toxic. They are hate embodied they are everything low vibration and so okay so that's one thing i don't even remember why i was wanting to say that but i was wanting to say that hello adhd <laughs> anyways what spomi always said to me was that because i said so is christianity wrong then or is religion wrong and he's like absolutely not the goal for each and every one of us is to find the light it's to find the divine. To be doing all this human stuff and still be able to find our way back to the divine. Anything that shifts your needle on the meter, that shifts your needle higher, raises your vibes, 
opens your soul and your heart, gets you at all closer to the divine, is the right path for you. Some people spend three or four church services a week sitting in the pew and they are still just as venomous and hateful and legalistic and judgmental and hypocritical even though they're in church all week long. And there are some people who've actually never stepped foot in a church. They go camping every weekend or they go fishing every Sunday, but they are the most kind-hearted, loving individuals. Whatever they're doing is the right path for them. Some people seem lit up in nature. They go out and they hug a tree and they feel closer to God than they've ever felt. That is the right path for them. So what I say is, I will never tell you what to do or not to. That is up to you. And whatever you're doing, as long as it is moving you closer to the divine, your heart is open, your vibes are high, you're treating this world with loving kindness, you realize that we are all one and all connected, that is the right path for you. So if you are drawn to using a cross or a crucifix and that is all that you have or that's what you're drawn to and you feel peace about it in your soul, don't ask anybody else what they think. Don't look to the Bible. Don't look to other people. Don't look to your friends or family that might judge you. Go within. Find out how you feel about it. What does your intuition tell you? And go from there. All right. That was a whole soapbox. I'm sorry I got on that. <laughs> that could have been a whole video on its own. Ugh. Okay. I request the most benevolent outcome from posting that answer. That things would be peaceful and that people would learn from it and that it would be taken with the spirit with which it was meant. And so it is. <laughs> Number six. If I place my hand, palm of the opposite hand, under the pendulum for answers, is that okay? Yeah. If you're using the pendulum and you want to hold it like this, I always do. Yeah. I think it actually helps kind of sandwich that energy. It helps conduct it a little better. But you don't have to do that. But there's nothing wrong with doing that. You can absolutely do that. Whatever feels comfortable for you. I had some more roll in to my... Um, comments and to my email so this will be number seven if you're new to the pendulum and trying to connect to your spirit guides you stated that you can set the intention to speak to a spirit guide once you set an intention can a trickster come through since i would have no way in knowing the difference because i'm new to communicating through the pendulum or is the intention powerful to the point where a trickster cannot override it and trick you Thank you for your answer. Thank you for your question. <laughs> Sorry, I'm hungry. I'm getting slap happy. Um, <laughs> I discussed this in one of either the last video of pendulum questions or the one before it, perhaps. The answer is yes. A, pen, a trickster can always come through. No, your intention is not powerful enough to completely block any tricksters. Um... For example, when I f first started filming, my energy was way higher. Now, my vibes are high, but my energy is low. Those can mean the same thing and be used interchangeably, or in this situation, they're two different things. Like overall, the umbrella of my frequency, my vibrational level in life is high. In this very moment, I've worked all day at my day job. In case you didn't know, I am a nurse. I worked all day. I am very tired. I could probably take a nap right now. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I need to be drinking more water. And um, I've been stressing about some things this week. Um, so anyways, I have multiple reasons why I am not going to be using this pendulum. Will I probably get mostly good answers, good responses? Yes, because overall my frequencies are high. But tricksters can always still come through. Now you say, because I'm new to this and I don't have any baseline reference point from which to judge it, there ends the problem. Um, the only way to get that experience is to get that experience 
the key is, as I discussed many, many times, don't take things that come through this pendulum as gospel. Do not take the information that comes through here and base major life decisions on them. Don't take the information that comes through and be like, oh my gosh, they said I only have six days to live. No. Take everything with a grain of salt, detach from the answers, detach from the outcomes, and like things that come through be like, okay, that's interesting. Cool. And then just wait to see what plays out. Your guides are never going to tell you you die in six days, FYI. So um, educate yourself as much as you can on these uh, situations. Go to my channel. Find the pendulum playlist. Spend a few hours watching through all of the videos because at this point in time, the videos that are on there, there's at least a few hours worth of them. Take responsibility for your learning process and your knowledge base. Educate yourself as well as you can and then get in there get to know your guides, develop a baseline so that you can tell. But in the beginning, just know that yes, it is possible that they jump in. No, there's no way to 100% block them out. But don't sit there being afraid that they're going to be there because then you will manifest it. They will be there. That's almost like giving them permission. Just have a, a happy, happy-go-lucky, open heart, positive spirit, positive mindset, and just have fun with it. Trust that you're talking to your guides and that it's all going to be okay. And take it all with a grain of salt. Okay. I think this is number eight. I lost count. I think it's number eight. So this is a long message. So bear with me. I'm going to read it. I'm going to paraphrase because it's a long message. Um, basically, this person has gotten a pendulum. They've been getting great responses from it. They say all the prayers, they do all the things, they call upon their spirit guide who is their grandmother. That's the first thing I take uh, issue with, okay? Now, if your grandmother died before you were born, I would say that's possible. If your grandmother died after you were born, I would say it's possible for them to be a guide. But if you're talking about your main guide, no. Because your main guide is with you from birth to death. So nobody that was alive during your lifetime will ever be your main guide. Okay? Um, she calls upon her spirit guide, who is her grandmother, and Archangel Michael to keep her safe. Uh, I check that my guide is from the white light. Um, my crystal has answered a lot of questions. Second thing and I don't mean to be nitpicky, I'm just trying to educate you guys, okay? I'm trying to get you to shift your perspective a little bit. Second thing is that your crystal doesn't give you any answers. This pendulum gives zero answers. It is a tool through which the answers come from your guides. Whatever entity you're talking to is giving you the answers, okay? I want you to think about it correctly. Um... I've gotten a lot of questions answered and confirmed things that I've asked. But although I've had specific answers, these things have not come about. Will the crystal tell me false answers? I don't think I've had a trickster. Girl, you've had a trickster. The fact that they, you've t been told this stuff and it hasn't happened. Trickster. <laughs> trickster. I don't mean to make light of it, but... Trickster. Um... I check often, but things it's confirmed will happen. I check on it often, but things that it confirmed will happen have not happened. I've asked a few times to get the same answers about the specific thing I asked, but it still has not happened. Okay. Honey, we need to have a talk. This is because you're not talking to your guide. You're not getting accurate information. Um, I don't remember that was a long message, so I'm not sure if you said that. I know you said you cleansed, you prayed, all of those things, but like, how are your vibes? How often are you meditating? And you don't have to tell me, just tell yourself. Um, how often are you meditating? How long are you meditating? If you're not meditating pretty much every day, 
15 minutes a day. Even if you're meditating, but you're doing other things that you know are lowering your vibes, like you need to keep your vibes high in order to use this. Um, so unfortunately, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this does not sound, nothing I read there tells me that you are working with your guide. Sorry, hon. And even if you are working with your guide, sometimes they're not going to tell you specific answers. They don't want to mess with free will. They don't want to mess with your decision-making process. Their job is not to influence your life, your free will in any way. Will they, if you say my free will is to change jobs, will they work and synchronize opportunities for a different job that they know you'll like? Yeah. If you say, my intention is to go to Paris this year, are they going to start finding you deals and having things show up in your email or like you might see a pamphlet for a travel um, agency or you know what I'm saying? Like they will start synchronizing things that is either in your life plan or that you have already set your intention for because that is your free will. But they're not going to come through and say, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is when it's going to happen. So that's the fun of being alive. You might not think it's fun, but that really is part of the fun of being alive is like, it's like a game. You know, when I used to play video games younger, when my kids had video games and I would like hijack their system. <laughs> I still feel bad about it thinking back on when my son was like, I don't know, 12 or 13 or something and like the new Splinter Cell had come out and I wasn't really a video game person. He'd be like, mom, play with me. And I'm like, mm, what's my thing? And he's like, play with me. And I'm like, okay. And then I got hooked and he'd be like, can I play my game yet? And I'm like, in a minute, honey. <laughs> and what was the character's name? Is it Sam Shepard? That doesn't feel right but yet it does. Anyways, back when I used to play the games and I was really into the Sims for a long time too. And like, then I discovered cheat codes and like you could put in the cheat code and get all the money on the Sims. You'd have like unlimited money. And at first that was really fun because you had all the answers and you could do whatever you wanted. And then I no longer play the Sims anymore because I got bored with it because like, you don't have to work. There's no strategy involved. You don't have to work for anything. Like, it's just all handed to you. Same concept. You may not think that this is part of the fun, but really part of being a human is to have this thinking mind and this emotional body and um, the ego and the psyche and, like, all of these things that are specific to being a human and to playing this human game. You're like in the Olympics or you're like in the Hunger Games or, you know, you are here to learn, to develop and to figure things out. And if I do this, this happens and that doesn't feel good. Or if this happens, I react this way and then I get more karma. Like, how can I best work this game of life? And if your guides come in and spoon feed you all of the answers, it removes the whole purpose, right? So, anyways, be discerning about the information that's coming through and work on raising your vibes. I think this is number nine. My question is, while using my pendulum, can I ask my spirit guide, if this is my main spirit guide that I'm talking to, can I also ask them to spell their names out as well? Yes, Michael, you can do both of those things. You can ask anything you want. They may not answer everything that you want them to. <laughs> but um, oh, I used to get so mad when Spomi would tell me no. I'd be like, but I want to know. And he'd be like, best not to tell you that. Mm -mm. And um, so anyways, yes, you can ask both of those things. And whatever name comes through, believe it. Because as I've talked about before, their names don't always look like our names. Sometimes they can look pretty funky. Oh, and if you guys are wondering how, because I always get this question too, how do you have them spell anything out? How do you not just get yes and no answers? The answer to that is that you use a pendulum chart, and I have them for free on my website in the shop if you want to go download them. 
All right, you guys, I think that's it. I think we've finished up all the pendulum questions I currently have, so if you have more, send them to me. I would be happy to make another installment of this. I have a feeling that we will be doing these indefinitely because there are always more questions, and that's okay with me. Just send them to me however you want to get them to me. Um, but I think we are done. We are done for now. And I love you all. I appreciate you all. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button below and the like button. It helps so much. It helps get this into the algorithm better. It helps um, get this information out to people who need it. And if you have anybody who's been interested in learning the pendulum, send them these videos. I have the whole playlist on my channel of all of the pendulum videos I've made. And there are some really good things in there, some good information. And if this is all very, very brand new to you, please go watch, at least spend, I think it's like 40 minutes long, spend the 40 minutes and watch that first video that I made on how to use a pendulum or pendulum for beginners. I will link to it below, but I really do go from A to Z on that. I filmed it about three years ago and I really went in depth on that topic and I tell you everything that you want to know and then all the other videos are addressing follow-up questions okay all right you guys love 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 to you and I will talk to you soon <laughs>